I'd like to thank you for taking the time today to review the Document Management Link solution developed by ORCID Systems. ORCID has been developing add-on products to Sage 300 ERP for a number of years and have been recognized on more than one occasion as Development Partner of the Year by Sage. Today we're going to be having a look at the Document Management Link solution. And although it's a component of the Information Manager, Information Manager is not a requirement. You can use the Document Management Link as a standalone product, or it can be used in conjunction with other components of Information Manager, specifically the notes, which we will see today. It is a fairly new product, so the Document Management Link solution is available for version 6.0 and higher. And when you purchase this module, it does include one user license, and then you have the option of purchasing additional per-user licenses, and they would be concurrent licenses. You do need to set up the Document Management Link solution on each workstation. So Document Management Link will give you the ability to attach documentation against any field in Sage 300 ERP. And I will preface that by saying that it does not include checkboxes or drop-down lists, but you can configure up to two fields per screen to have documents attached to them. The tray icon, which we'll get into more detail in a little bit, <clears throat> but the tray icon must be running for the documents to be displayed. You can choose to have that tray icon automatically start up, um, but if you make changes to the configuration of Document Management Link, you must refresh that tray icon for those changes to be saved. You can attach documents to an F9 Zoom screen. You can also configure and have documents stored against optional fields or any other SDK module as long as they have views in the S that SDK module. Uh, a Roto ID is required. And then just an added little feature for the notes is you can cut and paste notes, which would give you the ability to bring in colors and various fonts. So the documents that you're storing can be stored in a file share folder, or you can store documents in SharePoint. And that is SharePoint Foundation, which is a free product that's available with Microsoft Server. And if you have the SharePoint Designer, then you can create workflows and have email notifications as well. Um, SharePoint also has a feature where you can set security, so you can limit access to certain documents per user. Now, I have my SharePoint uh, currently running on a virtual machine, so I'm going to go through the configuration of my SharePoint here on slides, and when we go into the actual software, I'm not linked to SharePoint, and that's because uh, I didn't want to experience latency with the virtual machine, and mainly I wanted to be able to show you that you can use the document management link without SharePoint. You can use it strictly to view documents that are stored in a shared folder. But if you choose to configure SharePoint and store your documents in SharePoint, uh, the site would look something like this main screen does. And I have uh, my shared documents directory here. And within that directory, I have a folder called ACPAC. When I drill into that folder called ACPAC, I have a number of folders here, one of them being the AP invoices, which is the folder we'll be looking at today. So you can see I've drilled into ACPAC. And if I go one screen further, I've now drilled into my AP Invoice folder where I can see a list of all of the documents that are currently stored in that folder. I've got these red arrows just to point out a few specific documents so that when we go into the software you will see these documents. But Invoice 2012-0601 as well as the V1200, my contract 1234. But you do need to do some configuration in SharePoint. The final three fields or columns on this screen, you can see that I have an ERP field label, an ERP field value, and an ERP Roto ID. And this is how my documents will be identified in SharePoint, so that if a user, in our example today, 
goes to the vendor number field and calls up vendor 1200 on the AP invoice entry screen, then that's the point that it will display my document. So that's how documents are stored in SharePoint. We've mapped them to specific fields and values and screens within Sage 300 ERP. And when we get to the setup of the software, I'll show you how we go about doing that mapping. But that's how documents are identified, and that's how we know which documents to display when a user is in Sage 300 ERP. So I've got a screen capture of what the uh, it would look like in real life. I have pulled up the AP invoice entry screen and you can see my vendor 1200 is displayed on this screen. So what has happened is this box on the right hand side has opened up based on the fact that I have configured it against my AP invoice entry screen that when the vendor number field is populated with 1200, this is the list of documents I would like displayed and these are the documents that are stored in SharePoint. So we had a look earlier at the V1200 contract 1234, and we also looked at this invoice number uh, 2012-0601. So all of the documents that I had stored in SharePoint, I'm going to flip back to that screen, anything with a field value of 1200. So you'll notice I'm able to store documents against vendor 1400 in the same folder but it has been filtered based on the ERP field value and it's only showing me documents that pertain to vendor 1200 because that's what I've called up on this AP invoice entry screen. So that's the configuration with SharePoint. We'll move over now to the software so you can see how we would go about setting this up and what it would look like in the Sage 300 ERP environment. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up the exact same screen we were just looking at on that slide. So I have my AP invoice entry screen and you can see the window automatically opened up here for me. I'm just going to resize this. So you can see it's trying to load my documents from SharePoint and as I mentioned I'm not connected to SharePoint right now so it won't be able to load those documents but based on the screenshot that we were just looking at this is where the list of documents from SharePoint would appear. But I did want to show you that I am able to see documents that are in a shared folder so I don't require SharePoint to be able to use this product. Now from here I can explore which will take me into where the folder is that I have these documents stored. So I have them stored in my C drive. I've created a folder called Sage 300 ERP and I have my vendor 1200 folder as well as my vendor 1400. So if I go into the 1200 folder I can see the two documents that are displaying for me in Sage 300 ERP. I have the ability to add a new document to that folder right from my screen in Sage 300 ERP. I can also add documents straight to SharePoint from this screen as well. I could drag a document from my shared folder and store it into SharePoint for me as well. And SharePoint will fire up automatically for me so I can put a title against that document where it's stored in SharePoint. The bottom two boxes, the blue box and the red box, actually are the notes product. So that's another component of Information Manager, but we just wanted to show you that you can display notes in the same window as you're displaying documents. So let's go have a look at how I went about configuring this to display that information for me. It is under the setup of Information Manager, even if I do not have the Information Manager module. And we're going to be looking at the bottom four lines on this setup screen. The Roto ID, again, that refers to the screen in Sage 300 ERP. So on this configuration window, if the Roto ID is blank, then that means that my notes or my documents will display against all fields in Sage 300 ERP. If I want to limit the documents or notes to only appear on one screen, then I would populate a Roto ID here and then it will only display for that one screen that's been identified. 
we do have a display order here. So when, when that box popped open against my AP invoice screen, the first box that we could see was my network folder. The next box I could see was SharePoint. And I do have the same display order here. So if you have a duplicate display order, then it will look at the field label. And in this case, it's the exact same field label. So then it will look at the type and it will separate it that way. And then my final two boxes on the screen, my display orders two and three, were just the plain notes. Now, the network folder is uh, configured directly against that field label vendor number. And it's extremely important that this field label be correct when you're setting up this software. So how do you know for sure that it's the correct field label? We do have this tray icon down here, this hotkey. And this is what I mentioned earlier that must be running in order to display your documents or notes. So when you're on any screen in Sage 300 ERP, and I'm going to go back to the AP invoice entry screen. If you open up a screen and go to a particular field, then the notes hotkey will display for you, just move this over, the roto ID of AP 2100, which is my AP invoice entry screen. And it will also display for me the field name, so in this case, vendor number. If I were to close that and go to a different screen, adjustment entry, for example, and I open up my hotkey and I click in the vendor field, it will now show me that the roto ID is AP 4100, which is my AP adjustment entry screen. And in this case, the field name is vendor NO. So it's extremely important that you correctly identify the field label when you're doing the setup here. I can then choose the type. So in this case, we're going to be looking at my network folder. And then if I, I can click on the detail button and it will open up um, all of the lines in this grid. So it makes it a little bit easier to do the entry of information here. So I have my field label as vendor number. I can choose to identify an additional field, which the last note that was in red on our screen that popped up was actually popping up based on two fields, the vendor number as well as the location. And I'll show you that when we uh, have a quick look at the notes set up as well. But you can configure to have documents appear based on more than one field on a screen. So in the case of a network folder, I do need to identify the path to that folder. And you'll notice the, the end part of this says value. That's because it's going to display documents based on a particular value. So if you remember, it displayed documents based on the value of 1200, our vendor number 1200. So it only displayed documents that were related to that particular vendor. Under the notification method, this refers to my InfoSet hotkey here. I can choose to notify people that there's documents or a note attached to a screen by making that icon change color. I can make it blink or I can make it automatically pop up. But what we saw on the AP invoice entry screen was the show alert. And that meant that a box opened up and sat on the screen for the user to be able to view either the notes or the documents that were attached. And in most cases, I would think that you would configure it that way so that users can see documents that have been attached. However, you can choose to show that box and then have it automatically fade away. Or you can choose to not have that box pop up. And if you made that choice where you're not having the box pop up, then under this info set hotkey again, you can set, specify an F, F key. So I have F11 as the key that I'm using. You can reconfigure that to a different F key. But if a user clicks on F11 in my case, it will display any notes or documents that are stored against a particular screen. So that's the setup of the network folder. Um, if we come down now and have a look at how we would configure it for SharePoint, I would choose my type as SharePoint here. And we'll open up the details again. 
and I must choose the folder. So if you remember, my documents were stored in SharePoint under a directory called Shared Documents, ActPack, and AP Invoices. So once I've identified which folder I'm storing my documents in, I can then choose to filter my documents. So if you remember, we had documents stored both for Vendor 1200 and for Vendor 1400 in the same folder in SharePoint. So I'm filtering those documents based on the vendor number field and based on what's been populated within that field or the value. So in my case, I'm filtering it based on that vendor number 1200. I can choose to automatically open SharePoint. So I was mentioning that I can add documents to SharePoint straight from Sage 300 ERP and I can drag and drop documents into there. So when I do that and I'm adding documents to SharePoint, I can choose to automatically open SharePoint so that I can put in a title for that document. And again, on this info set hotkey is where I would configure the SharePoint site, the user ID, and the password for the system to be able to automatically open SharePoint. Now before I close this hotkey, I'll just mention the user ID and password must be populated as well as the main or default company. So when a user logs in, it will automatically use this information. I can choose to close this when ActPack closes and as I mentioned we can automatically start this and I'll show you how to do that in just a little bit. But I can also have this automatically change for every company and what that means is you have an option of storing notes just in your main company that can then be viewed in other companies or you can store separate notes per company. So if you're storing separate notes then you would want to change the company automatically. But if you're storing your notes only in one main database but you want them to be viewed in other databases then you would not activate that feature. So lastly on my SharePoint configuration, I do need to do that mapping from my ERP field label to the SharePoint field label column, my ERP field value as well as my Roto ID to the columns in SharePoint. Again, I have the same notification methods available to me whether I want to have users notified based on the icon or based on the box that pops up against the transaction in Sage 300 ERP. So as I mentioned, uh, under the notes I do have an example of where I've configured a note to appear only when the vendor number and the remit to location are present on a transaction. So that was that final note that we saw that was showing up in red. So once I've configured all of that, I do have the ability to have note types. So a note type, for example, would be AP invoices. And with those note types, I have the option of whether or not I want to allow multiple notes. And what that means is if I choose no in this instance, when someone goes to make a change to a note, it will overwrite the existing note. Whereas if I choose yes here, then it will allow a user to add additional notes beyond what was already present. After we've created note types, we do create roles. So roles would be things like an accounts receivable person. And under that, you can uh, specify for each note type whether or not that group of people would be able to add, view, edit, or delete notes within the software. Once we've created that group or roles, then we will assign those to particular users. So in this case, I could say the divisional manager only is available, only has uh, the role of AP available to them. So lastly, I mentioned how you can automatically get your tray icon to start. It's just a matter of creating a startup folder. So under my main company, I just need to right click and say new folder, call it startup, and then it will appear down at the bottom of the list here. 
and I can drag my tray icon into this startup folder and it will automatically start for me every time I open Sage 300 ERP. So that's the document management link. I'm going to put up some information here that you can contact us with. We'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to review this software. And if you have any additional questions or you would like additional information, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thanks very much.